Hi, it's Michelle Birdsong, a Mount Red Songbird. Here to offer proof that Adam, Michael Bublé, is singing to Eve, Mild Red. Okay. Carly Simon sang, You're So Vain. I bet you think the song, the think the ink, the song is about you. It's like, I'm supposed to dismiss the evidence that Adam at am here on earth. Add that I'm here on earth. That Adam is singing to me, Eve, because it can't be true. I'm just vain, according to Carly Simon. In his hit song called Home, in the video, he's kidding around with David Foster and says, you have a Liberace, Pierce Brosnan thing about you. I have a photo of Liberace on my wall. <laughs> you see Liberace? Okay. Liberace, by the way, was Milo. And so was Chopin. Uh, so that's, I guess, remote viewing, that that the army does, the military does. They, they train people to do remote viewing, meaning they can go anywhere and see what anybody's doing. Okay, so my personal spiritual guide, <clears throat> as I made the journey of the soul, Jesus Christ, in the form of Charon Singh, said, and this was a most hope, uh, helpful thing to know. For me, there's no such thing as a coincidence. Okay? In his song, God Gave Me You, Blake Shelton mentions divine conspiracy. Mr. Shelton, Ernest Shelton, was the name of my first boss. When I was in fifth grade, Mr. Shelton, the principal of the school, Cobb Elementary, would come to my class and ask Miss Dixon, the teacher, if he could borrow me. She always said yes. This happened every day. I just now found out that Adam, Michael Buble, now Michael Buble, was Mr. Shelton. I adored Mr. Shelton. I was his 10-year-old secretary, okay? But, of course, he didn't know he was Adam, and I didn't know he was Adam, and I didn't know I was Eve, and he didn't know I was Eve. We, we, he was just going by, and we were just going by energy. We were feeling each other's energy. Uh, Buble says to David Foster that when he marries David's daughter, Amy, he could be a real foster child. Growing up, having, uh, growing up, being taken care of by Aunt Doni and um, Brother Wright. Brother Wright was Adam. Uh, while my mother was working, and in first grade, she had me live with them five days a week. It was almost like being an orphan. Or a foster child. Now, if you look at the letters in foster, it says, Feel, order, saint, energy, her. She has the energy of a saint, okay? She's ordered to feel the energy of a saint, okay? That's what is her vibration, okay? And I wrote it out. I had the energy of a saint because I had been Guru Nanak, the founder of Sikhism, and then I give you an, another clue. Trump was Gobind Singh Ji, the 10th Sikh guru. That's why he's here. I asked, not realizing I had been Nanak nor Eve for divine intervention. I asked for divine intervention. When I saw Barry Satoro, Baraki Hussein, Hillary Killary, George Soros, Schumer, Pelosi, etc., the leftists, were destroying our country and God. And so I asked for divine intervention and God intervened. Trump, who'd 
Ben God realized, stepped up and became president. No doubt with the help of Jesus Christ, who was Charon Singh G, my personal guide. Okay, so there's a divine conspiracy. It's all over the place. In the video, Buble, I used to call my husband Bub, B-U-B, and he was anything but a Bub, but I don't know, I just, I don't know why, I just did that, okay, and then if you look at the word just, J for justice, United States for U.S., T for, oh, S-T for saint, justice, a United States saint, okay, so that's, uh, Trump was a United was a saint, and now he's United States president. And Eve was a saint. Okay, she's a United States saint. She lives in the United States. Okay, page three in this video home, Bublé starts off singing with the country twang. A come on to introduce a guy who's having a country hit with his song Home. I was raised. I, being Eve, was raised 45 miles from Nashville, Tennessee, the home of country music. I love it. Blake Shelton was out, and Blake Shelton follows me on Twitter, and we we almost had a date. He talked about um, he talked about uh, taking me out to dinner when he comes to New York. And, but I can't tell anybody. He said, don't tell him. But would I sign a confidentiality agreement? And I said, I tell everything I know. That would be very difficult. However, you know, if you need me to do that, because Blake Shelton was my husband in a past life, you know, so um, there is an attraction there. But uh, what happened? Uh, he just stopped tweeting me, and... I forgot about him. Then recently he said, I'll be your honeybee. And I thought, oh, no, that, that ship sailed, you know. But then I, I tweeted him, and I'll be your cup of tea. <laughs> so anyway, he's unconscious. And, uh, so there you go. And has amnesia. When we're born, they wipe our memories clean. I'm not sure how that's done. I, I saw... Oh, Stara Gloria, when she was in the womb, I did some remote viewing. I didn't do it on purpose. I don't know if Baba G. Gurinda, my son, had me do it, but I saw this man reading to her or talking to her nonstop when she was in the womb. <clears throat> and uh, she couldn't think, you know, so if somebody's in the womb and somebody's talking to them nonstop, it's gonna it's gonna keep them from forming memories. It's gonna it's gonna drown out their memories for nine months. Somebody's talking to you nonstop. You can't think, so it it may block out your memory. That may be how they do it. It's a guess on my part. I'm not sure. So Blake Sheldon was Alex de Tocqueville, a French. I think French is the loveliest sounding language of all. A French. He was a French diplomat, a political scientist, and historian. That's who Blake Sheldon was in a past life. He was best known for his works, Democracy in America, and the Old Regime and the Revolution. And he was my husband in another life. I said that. So I'm. Um, so as I'm watching Buble and de Tocqueville singing together to the same girl, <laughs> they're singing to Eve, shaking hands and hugging. I'm reminded of a friend, a psychiatric nurse, Beverly Woodard, who told me years ago that men make friends with their competition. See, people give me clues. I don't know where to fit it. So I hold it in my mind, and then when... Uh, the occasion arises that it fits, I put it in. You see how that, that's how my mind works. So, uh, Buble says, I've been keeping all the letters, Buble and, okay, I guess he said it, Adam, Buble, says that I've been keeping all the letters 
that I wrote to you. Okay, that's what he said. And I say, I get that his songs are letters to me, to Eve. He says in a song, I've acted out my life on stages, 10,000 people watching. So, I, you know, I've gotten to um, understand him checking out his videos because, he's, because he tells his different trips in his different songs, you know. So he's saying uh, in, the, in the song, Home, my words are cold and flat, and you deserve more than that. He's referring to what he said to me when he was reacting to Cain and me. Uh, I put Cain and Eve, this is Gorinda and I, having been loving one another intimately. Okay. So his words were cold and flat because he was mad as a hat. Or... Divine conspiracy is Cain using his power to get his parents back together. He is unhappy with a broken family. Eleanor Roosevelt, who's Judy Ruddinger here, she's up there. See the pink, see the pink, pink top. That's Judy Ruddinger. Says she thinks people should talk about everything. She said that in writing group one day and I remembered it. So if Adam and Eve had discussed the eve Cain pairing, domestic violence, fits of jealous rage would not have been passed down to the people from the very first family because they could have resolved it on the spot. Eve could have said, and Cain, we didn't know it was wrong. There are no rules here except don't eat the virgins on the apple tree. Of knowledge, you call it. So, you know, and then uh, if they would have said that, and then Adam's, uh, Adam would have felt doubt and disbelieved because he was overcome with emotion. You know how they say women think uh, emotion is thought? Well, Adam couldn't think he was so overcome with the motion of jealousy and rage. Okay. So, are you I hope you're following me. Cain and Eve's relationship was mutual and voluntary. Uh, Cain was out of pole and needed Eve physically, intimately. Eve, being a more, responded to Cain's need by being what Jordan Peterson, Eve's husband, when he was Carl Jung says, which is women are more agreeable than men. Okay, so Eve was agreeable to Cain's pleadings for her body and to Abel's need for her teats, which means the eats, you see. The eats, that's what babies must to eat, newborns. He fed off her, Cain did. He sucked her dry. Concepts the world uses, okay? You've heard that, sucking somebody dry. That's where that came from. So the love between Cain and Eve has morphed into something horrible where children are forced to be sex slaves to adults, a complete bastardization of Cain and Eve's love. Although Eve would not, in her right mind, be intimate with a family member anymore because incest brings about smart people, sure, but abnormal people like the Ashkenazi Jews such as George Soros. Einstein was a good man, Ashkenazi Jew, because he believed in God, and he had, therefore, that extra light that you get when you believe in God. He married his cousin a second time around, but he had children by his first wife, no relations. Adam and Eve gave us pedophilia. Oh, my. Oh, yeah, that's a scary thing. Who knew that would morph, something so beautiful would morph into something so ugly and hideous? 
So they give us pedophilia, which is love corrupted, corrupted love. And they gave us laws against incest and the practice of the child being the spouse in the following life. Okay, you don't know that because everybody's memory is all uh, wiped clean. However, the energy is there, you know. Everybody knows the closeness between mother and son and father and daughter. That's what that's about. They're going to be married in the next life when they're the same age. See, Adon and Brother Wright were near the same age, but they weren't physically the same. She was very tall and weighed over 300 pounds, and he was short, and she was light-skinned. She was red like an Indian, and he was very dark like coal and very short. And yet, he was very manly, and she was ladylike, so it worked somehow. We didn't even think that they looked mismatched, you know. It was the only marriage I ever saw that was perfect, that they played their parts perfectly. He called her little one, and she called him daddy, and, and, and he was very, um, of course, he loved Eve, who was called Minnow, the little child that they were raising. But he was he did his duty toward his wife, you know. He took his wife's side all the time. He was a very honorable, and he was Adam. Adam had really evolved into an honorable man who loved Jesus Christ and who did his duty. And she did her duty, and Johnny did her duty. They were remarkable role models. You know. My mother said she couldn't find a decent husband because she kept looking for Brother Wright, <laughs> you know, a man like Brother Wright. So uh, then Adam, Michael Bublé sings, I can only give you love that lasts forever. His love for Eve has lasted since the beginning of time, and he's now singing, I've had my run, baby, I'm done. I want to come home, home, the garden, heaven. Heaven is eternal, forever. And then if you break down forever, it says for Eve, and R stands for her, for Eve, her. And the logic of it is because I only have love for Eve, so I can only give you Love meant for Eve. You are my substitute for Eve. Are you following this? Adam, like everyone else except Cain and Eve, has amnesia, inability to remember events. If you break down the word remember, it's re, me, Michelle Birdsong, energy, her. Okay. I so said, what does that mean? That means my energy or her energy is me, Michelle Birdsong. So the her of the world, the feminine, is Michelle Birdsong. You should understand that. Comes from Eve. Michelle Birdsong is Eve. So the feminine in the world, the feminine energy comes from Eve. And the masculine energy comes from Michael Buble. All right. And then if you break down the word events, it's Eve in talk and share. Talk and share. I was Sigmund Freud and Fritz Perl, German psychologist, psychiatrist. And I created a therapy that works called talk and share. All right. And so the sentence out of this is, we're even, let's talk and share, okay? Now remember what uh, Eleanor Roosevelt said, we talk about everything. And Hazumaraji said the Indians are saying they don't need psychiatrists because they talk about everything. So talk and share is a way of doing that. And you talk about your feelings, you own them. 
I am angry, and then the anger goes away. It's a very simple, it's as simple as uh, them realizing, surgeons realizing if we wash our hands, we won't kill our patients, okay? So then it says, will energy to talk and share. Use your will to use your energy to talk and share, and you'll have a sane relationship. I saw this word images. You break it down on ages 32 and 72. Now that's the way it is for me. When I was at the subatomic particle level, the way there's no sound and no uh, time. No, there's, there's, there's sound, there's no time and space. So I stopped aging. That makes me 32. But on paper, since I was born in the 40s, I'm 72, you see? So Images is explaining that I'm ages 32 and 72. There's so much in the language that shows me that the world is about Adam and Eve. You know, so to ignore Adam and Eve is to deprive yourself of understanding the world. Okay, so this is Michelle Bird's song, Miles Red Songbird. You may need to listen to this video again because I moved rather quickly. But you can understand what I'm saying, you know, if you uh, pay attention. This says, Michael Bublé, Adam after all. <laughs> bye bye.